Hello and welcome to my little creation, Oxfordshire Sports Online, OXSO. I'm going to bring you local sports stories throughout the season. You will be able to follow us and you'll also see it on social media, driving towards our live stream events with ice hockey and football featured in the past. Last weekend wasn't a great weekend for the home counties Premier League cricket. It rained all weekend, lots of games abandoned and also it was the first and opening season defining matches for our sides. Oxford United, Oxford City, Banbury United and indeed Didcot Town, our top four sides all lost. Well I caught up with Mark Jones whose side head off to Scarborough this weekend to see if they can make amends for their defeat on the opening day of the season. Mark, Scarborough away, what do you know about them and uh, exactly how are you feeling about the prospect of going to the seaside? Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, every, um, they played uh, Peterborough last week and didn't get off to the start they would have liked. Uh, but I think they're a good side. They just missed, missed out on the playoffs last year. So uh, we're expecting a very tough test up there. Um, we've tried to do as much sort of research on them as we can, but it is the start of a new season. But I expect them to sort of try and pass the ball. They've got a, an ex-professional uh, player in Jonathan Greening as the manager. And um, with all the things I've heard is they try and get the ball down on play so you know be a tough test for us but no matter what Scarborough try to do we've got to concentrate on ourselves because if we don't get our performance levels right then you know it doesn't really matter what they do you know it's going to be a tough day for us so concentrating on ourselves and we've obviously trying to bounce back from a defeat last Saturday. And looking at last Saturday yes it was a defeat but it's great to get that first game under your belt any knocks or niggles going into this weekend? We're hoping to have a clean bill of health actually. We, we, uh, last Saturday uh, we were without a couple of players in Finn Tap and Tope Odebemi. Uh, you know, they were both struggling so we hope they'll be available because they could be key players for us. But no, uh, fingers crossed nothing uh, too bad happens tonight in training and we can go with uh, a full squad up there. And, and as for a manager when you have that final preparation training session technical I should imagine set plays in and out of uh, shape with the ball you don't want too much contact do you? No I think we've got to be a bit careful I mean we've got to, we're leaving very early Saturday morning so I think you know we'll get the players in do a little bit of work with them get them away tonight because uh, less than sort of 48 hours we'll be traveling up there again so uh, look yeah we need to work on a few things so we watched the game back um, and there were definitely areas of our game that need improvement but you know it wasn't a dreadful performance on Saturday we weren't battered from start to finish or anything like that I think we sort of um, you know, we, we killed ourselves by sort of conceding goals quickly and that took the game away from us. But uh, look, you know, I'm sure that uh, there's area for improvement with this group. They are a new group. That's been well documented. And, you know, I think that we have to give these players a chance over three or four games to show what they can do. And I don't want to sort of overreact after one game and start sort of, uh, you know, panicking and, you know, looking to bring more players in. I think, you know, we did commit to these lads and I think it's only fair that we give them, you know, a run of games to prove that they are capable at this level. Final question, if I offered you a point now, would you snap my hand off? No, I think um, you know you, you, a point away from home in the National League North is never to be sniffed at, but it's very hard to obviously predict a result. But we've got two away games coming up now with Scarborough and Gloucester. I suppose you know if you look at that, if we can get four points out of our next two games, that would be a very good return in my opinion. But look, no game's the same. You don't know how it's going to go, and we just have to give our very best up there and see see uh, so, see see how we do. In the home counties Premier League Division 2, Horsepath has sat one off the bottom and fighting against relegation. Last weekend they should have played against Buckingham in a game that was rained off and Buckingham a third from bottom. I caught up with club captain Will Eason ahead of this weekend's game, a derby against Oxford. Right, I'm joined by Will Eason. Will, huge game against Oxford this weekend here at Horsepath. Uh, Sad last week, and the rain's been a bit of a problem throughout this season. You looking forward to it? Yes, um, it's a big game for us. Um, we've only got four left. We're in a, a difficult position in terms of the league uh, table. Um, so this week we're sort of hoping to to get a win and get our season, those coming towards an end, sort of going with four with four to go. Buckingham just above you in the table. Uh, obviously, last Saturday's washout really didn't help either of you but certainly from your position sitting just below them that was a game you really needed on. Yeah we, we did um, with them just above us um, we sort of set ourselves up um, throughout the week to, to get a positive result and 
like so often this season, the weather's played a big part in it and um, we weren't able to make an impact on the day. Rupert Evans brings his Oxford side, which are comfortably in mid-table at the moment, a young side as well. What do you know about them and what happened earlier in the season? Yeah, probably um, the worst game we've played all season, to be perfectly honest. Um, we, we, were, we were not very good at all. Um, we sort of set 180 and then didn't bowl very well. They knocked them off three or four down, so we're hoping this week to, to sort of bounce back from that. Um, we know we've got to make amends from that, that poor result two months ago. And the wicket out here always uh, a little bit on the wet side at the bottom of the hills have shot over, but uh, a lot of rain this week. Would it be one that you'd be looking to insert them? I'll sort of look at it more so on the day. Um, we've not chased very well, we've not set very well so far this season, so yeah, we'll have a look in the morning and, uh, and make a decision then. Splendid place to come and play uh, cricket and watch your cricket down here. The clubhouse will be open, everybody gets behind the horsepower boys down here in the village and uh, ultimately you want to stay in the home counties Premier League Division 2 don't you? Yeah that's, that's the aim you know um, throughout the season we, we've just not played well enough um, the aim obviously with, with four to go is to, to keep our status in the league um, we need a positive result uh, this Saturday and then hopefully we can work from that and uh, have a good end to the season. Last time I saw William Eason he was carrying a knock is he fit and raring to go? I don't know about fit um, but raring to go. <laughs> and it's getting towards the ice time. The Oxford City Stars and the Oxford Rising Stars have spent a summer of getting ready for the new season. It all kicks off with our live streaming and home games at the Oxpens for both sides this September. The Oxford City Stars have made notable signings, but the Oxford Rising Stars in just their second season. Well, I caught up with head coach Warren Jones and he told me how it's looking. Warren, six weeks to put aside together last season. This season, a bit more time on your hands. How's the, the assembly of the roster this year going? Uh, it's gone really well. Um, we've gone a little bit younger than we were last year. Um, we're attracting guys from NIHL 1 as well as our NIHL 2 teams. Uh, last year we had you know, a core group that gave us a little bit of depth. But if we were missing one or two, we could run ourselves into some problems. Um, whereas in this year we've kind of got 12 solid forwards, 8 solid D-men and 3 solid netminders um, which gives us competition throughout everything and gives us that little bit of cover for injuries and the inevitable suspensions and bits and pieces that come throughout course for hockey season people missing games and stuff like that um, but yeah, it's, it's really good I think um, the OHA state is you're only allowed some like 8 guys over the age of uh, or 12 guys over the age of 25 and I think we're at 5 and the rest of the guys are all under 23 really. Um, so yeah, it's been a really good productive off-season. Um, we're a lot more capable across three or four lines than we might have been at points last year. Um, and it's really good that we've got all but one of the under 18s that iced for us last year returning. So um, all on full term, you know, coming out juniors into the senior team, continuing their hockey here in Oxford rather than going around well. So. The Rising Stars in their second season, very professional outfit behind the scenes, board committee members, everybody driving off to the ice hockey in the right direction. How easy was it for you to make your decision to come back this season? Uh, my decision to come back this season is, was as simple as, as long as Paul and Russ are driving it and at the helm and making the decisions for us and trying to drive Oxford ice hockey forward, um, I'll remain and I'll stay put, um, whether that's in a coaching capacity or playing, or just coaching and not playing at all. It will be, you know, Oxford is my hometown club. I might have been away for a very long time prior to this season, but it's, I've got a lot of passion for it. You know, when I was a kid, my dad used to sit on the junior club committee, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you know, the idea of building somewhere so kids don't have to do what I did um, and go and play senior hockey elsewhere, where I ended up feeling at home, very comfortable at Basingstoke for 10 something years. Um, is exactly why I chose to come back in the first place, and that continues. Um, you know, we're starting to look at doing things with the junior club and school days. And, you know, we've got some more committee members now who focus on the community outreach and how we can help that. And um, you know, try and pull Oxford and the Rising and the junior club and the Stars all in the same direction, which I think everybody's taken steps towards this summer. Um, you know, hopefully it starts to show on the ice over the next 
four to five years. It's never going to be a media impact. But Development's a massive, massive word. You've talked about the youngsters that didn't have this rung in the ladder that have left and gone elsewhere like yourself. It must be incredibly pleasing to get these youngsters from last year that have got another year's experience in their legs back on board for another season. Yeah, I, it was kind of the focus for me of you know, once I got my season, my A's sorted um, and all, all the group to come back. The next group that I spoke to was the four under 18 graduates, um, making sure that they were all coming back this season and playing again and um, we're going to remain here. Um, along with Charlie Roach, who you know, is the more exceptional and gets the chance to play with the Stars a lot more often, but keeping those other guys that might have otherwise fallen by the wayside still playing hockey and playing it in Oxford is exactly what we need to do, so yes, good oh, sense of And what can the Rising Stars fans look forward to this season? Action packed, fun filled, thrill yeah. of it. It, it will be, you know, we're, never, we're not a team that's designed to win the league and win every single game. But, you know, one of the things that I always say to my boys and, you know, people hear me say after games and bits and pieces like that in interviews with yourself is it's okay to lose hockey, but it's never okay to not compete. Um, so the one thing that they can guarantee that they're going to see when they come and watch us is a compete level. Um, win or lose, the boys never quit and they keep working hard.